Good morning, everyone. Um, I started this video earlier, and when I went to edit what I had done so far, I realized the first two clips were not in focus. So for some reason, my iPad was not focusing on what I was doing. So I am going to demonstrate the beginning of this again. Um, I am painting on a Canva artboard. It's 12 by 16. These are, they're heavyweight, really nice, heavy boards. So they don't warp. They're good for acrylic, watercolor, oil. Maybe not watercolor. They'd be good for watercolor if you put a watercolor ground on them. I started just by putting white gesso over the surface, but they are pre-primed, so you don't have to gesso them if you don't want to. That's what the actual artwork that I'm showing you is on. It's on one of these panels, but because I lost or had blurry footage to begin with, I'm going to just reshoot the beginning, the part that was blurry, using some mixed media paper, just so that you can see how I started. And this looks like it is in focus, so um, I coated this with one coated gesso. I started with transparent red iron oxide. Now I'm not sure that the paper is going to take the paint exactly the same way as that artboard did, but I'm hoping that I'm going to get the same result. So this is a high flow acrylic and I'm watering it down even a little bit more just in my brush, just with some water. And I'm going to go in sections and then I'm going to dip my fingers in my brush basin and just flick water into the wet paint and wait just a couple seconds. I want some big and some little drips in there. So I'm going to wait a couple of seconds while that kind of works its way through the wet paint and then I just have a, this was clean when I started earlier, <laughs> it's just a piece of old sheeting And as I dab the water off, I am getting these cool spots. This might be where my camera readjusted and then didn't adjust back when I put it down. It looks okay to me. So I'm just going to do this in sections. This is what I did on the artboard. Just went in sections. Try not to overlap too much from one section to another. Just get some water on there. Obviously the higher up you're flicking, the smaller your drops will be. Not only am I getting the drips or the spots, I'm also getting the marks in the background from the edges of the cloth. So this is the base layer of this piece. It's really easy. You can do it in your art journal. paper, canvas. You can see that this was more, I think, watered down more. And so it just started, yeah, it just started working more. And you'll see more lines in the background because it was thinner paint application. a little bit, darken it up. And 
Okay, so that is step one. Okay, next layer I have Deco Art Fluid Acrylic and Transparent Yellow Iron Oxide. And I am going to water it down just a tad. And what I'm doing is just building up the depth of color here. And while that is still wet, I'm going to take just the tips of this brush and going back and forth. It helps move the paint a little bit. It softens it. And it's blues and bristles. And it helps dry it too. But you can see the difference already. It's just a difference in the depth of the color. It's adding depth to the red that I put on first, but it's also adding color to those spots. I'm holding the brush really loosely back on the end of the handle. That prevents me from putting too much pressure and just wiping the paint off, which is not what I'm trying to do. All right, I think this is crying out to be an abstract, so that's the direction I'm going to go. I'm going to take a chance and try this high flow in turquoise phalo. I'm not going to go over the whole thing. I'm going to dry my brush out first. I'm going to just do this. section I just watered the turqu turquoise phalo down with just some clear water to get a lighter tone across there and I'll wipe it back. I was thinking about the color harmonies and if this yellow orange is my key color the turquoise would be part of the split complement if you know the color wheel. Here I'll show you. If my key color is this, which is pretty close here, the split direct complement is going to be blue violet. But we've already used this turquoise which is one side of a split complement. So the other side of the split complement is what you would want to add next. And that's violet and I'm not feeling violet. So what I did instead was I mixed some Titan Buff with what was left on my mat of the turquoise phalo. And I'm just going to randomly bring that Cross here. Not feeling those dark lines very much right there. And then I'm going to bring my softening brush back in and crisscross lightly through those. 
and just kind of spread them out and get some little trailing edges. which will probably end up being covered up, but it's a good place to start. I can live with that. And I'm going to dry yeah, it again. I'm take a big chance here. I am going to mix clear glaze medium with the Titan Buff that I used with the Phthalo Turquoise. To and I'm mixing it about maybe two parts of glaze to one part paint. I want it fairly transparent. Alright, this one then. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to mix it with my brush. Let's continue with this line, maybe. I'm going to end up losing all my spots. I'll come down here. Let's see what it does. this broken more. I'm going to take a baby wipe, see if I can get some of it to lift a little bit. Then I'm going to glaze this because I like where it is right now. This is just the clear glaze base that I used to mix with the Titan Buff to get this color down here. Um, but it will protect the painting. So now if I do something on top of it that I really hate, I will have a better chance of being able to get it off. So. Just getting a nice even layer on here. I don't want to overwork it. I think we're about there. Oh, let that dry. Okay, I have mixed five drops of carbon black high flow acrylic with ten drops of turquoise phalo high flow acrylic that I've already used on here and I am going to apply it with a bowl scraper and I'm going to turn this I know you can't see the whole thing but I need to pull it toward me I'm 
going to turn it. Oh, I don't want that on there. And I'm going to come from the other end. I'm going to try and get some just right on the edge, tap it through. Okay, I like where this has gone, but now this is bothering me. It needs more depth. So I'm going to put some Quinn Nicolazo gold up there. And I better shake that up better. like the green in there. This did make a big difference. I like that better now. It just has more depth and texture and the deeper color is much better. And still some spots. You can have, see some spots in here. A few back in the background there. It was fun to start with the spots everywhere. I just wasn't sure where I was going to go with it, so I like this. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to make some marks. I'm going to let it dry really good, clean up a little bit. I'll be back. I decided before I cleaned up that Quinn Nicolazo gold, I just took my brush and put random kind of heavy strokes of paint down in this area it was just hitting my eye as now too light after I put the Quinn gold up there and then just softened it very lightly with the softening brush to just kind of push those heavy strokes of paint into like little rivulets I like it better there is just a little bit of the lighter in here I think I might add some white or something along there at some point. But I just wanted to 
show you what I did. I've totally lost my marks. Okay, everything dried overnight. And I just have a piece of newsprint here that I tore to go across that green area. And I have a Deerfoot stippler brush. And I'm using a mixture of clear glazing, medium, and Titan Buff fluid acrylic. And I'm going to just pounce it along this mask. And then I don't want it to dry. I want to create that line right there. I feel like it needs some vertical elements. So I have Titan Buff in this fine line applicator bottle. I might regret this, but we'll see. Not going for, I'm going to start kind of off of the board. And carefully tip this this way so I don't smear it. Actually, I might smear it on purpose. I might, let's see. Um. I'm going to just go with this really soft brush. Oh yes, that's good. Okay, let's... We'll see how bright it is. I don't know. Let me move this down a little. I'm going to do this same thing, but in black, and go across some of these lines. And I have carbon black in this fine liner. Put it right there. 
right cap unscrewed here. Wish me luck. Well, that wasn't straight. Playing card, and there is some carbon black on my craft mat. Instead of doing the ruler thing, I think I'm just going to pull some more like randomish lines through those white ones. Yeah, that's better. Now I want to go this way. <laughs> I'm probably going to hate myself at some point for not stopping. But... to dry it and then I have a question for all of you so stay tuned okay I'm looking through the viewfinder and I think it most of it's in there so I'm gonna put some still pictures at the end with letters to decide the orientation so does it go this way or does it go this way or this way or this way and then leave me a comment and let me know which way you like it so i hope you enjoyed the process it took me the course of a couple of days to do this and of course I've pared it down and sped it up for you so I hope you enjoyed it I hope you like it if you do give this video a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and in the meantime go make some art bye